Hello everyone. Today we have the new Plaid car computer. Um, this is the same in uh, both the Plaid and the new Model S and X. It's a departure from the older cars where the computer was located in the center screen itself. Now they've moved to a similar situation as Model 3 and Y have been where the car computer is a separate module and the display is, is separate. So um, this contains both, uh, what well, contains a lot of stuff, but the car computer and the autopilot computer, as well as the gateway, um, some audio processing, stuff like that. It's liquid cooled. We have coolant in and out. So this is located in the floorboard, um, the passenger side floorboard of the car. So right where passengers' feet would be resting, uh, there's a plastic piece under the carpet that covers this. So if the car ever gets wet, I'm looking at you, Chet. <laughs> um, this gets uh, gets wet pretty fast, and uh, it's very going to be very expensive to replace if it does get wet. Other than the glycol cooling, we have a bunch of connectors. Might be easier to pull the cover off. So um, this is our wireless and Bluetooth connector. This is uh, debug USB um, is what is labeled, <clears throat> which is actually a micro HDMI connector. It's not used for HDMI, but this contains um, like UART connections for debugging the system. This is the USB-C connector that goes to the glove box for uh, the dash cam recording. This is a console USB. This is unpopulated, but it's labeled passenger display. So at one point, maybe they thought they were going to use a passenger display, or maybe they intend on using this in you know newer vehicles, like maybe the Cybertruck or so something where they're going to have a second display. I don't know. Um, this is power and data for the center display, I believe. Um, our center display, which contains uh, f four conductors for the two differential pairs and two power connections. This is identical to what they've been using on Model 3 and Y, but now we've got three of them. So we've got center display, instrument cluster, and the rear display. And the touchscreen data comes back down the same two twisted pairs that the video goes down. Uh, on the right side, this is used in Europe for the eCall system. This is a single twisted pair, a gigabit broad reach that goes to the autopilot computer, so it basically just goes from here to here when the wiring harness is, is present. This is the Diag, also a single twisted pair gigabit for the Diag connector, which is located on the screen. This is uh, power uh, input. This is uh, some of the CAN buses, and uh, like uh, there's a single twisted pair 100 uh, meg broad reach for the radio tuner some other things like that. And these are all speakers. So um, like mostly the front speakers and your um, pedestrian warning speaker it comes off, off here. Um, we've got a battery backup for the real time clock on the gateway. Uh, power supply filtering, all these big caps. This is the LTE modem. It's a separate module. That way in Europe um, they can put a different module in. Um, it's a Quectel AG525RGL. Um, interesting, it's labeled engineering sample. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, um, so obviously Tesla got some early parts. Um, I think under here is uh, like the Ethernet chip and some other things. These are the diversity antennas. In Europe, there would be a, a third diversity antenna for eCall. That way. Um, we have uh, RAM for the Ryzen processor and a JTAG for the gateway. Really not much else on the top side. So on the bottom side, we have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. Um, we have more RAM on the uh, other side for the Ryzen. This is the Ryzen processor. It's uh, a four core, 45 watt uh, embedded version of the Ryzen. Uh, it's got 512 
k level 2 cache per core and 4 meg level 3 cache it's a special embedded one um, the, the part number I'll put it in the uh, description but I couldn't find it on anything exactly uh, online so either it's custom made for Tesla or you know maybe house marked or they just haven't released any data on it and then uh, we've got our voltage regulation buck converters for it this is a, uh, a 256 uh, gig NVMe module from Micron that provides all the storage for the Ryzen we've got a SIM card socket although it's not used in the US um, they use an eSIM that's uh, part of this module um, this is the uh, 16 gig uh, micro SD for the gateway where the gateway stores its logs. We've got three audio amplifier chips. Um, this is these are class D amplifiers so you can see the filters here for the output. Uh, this is the gateway really the same that's being used in uh, model 3 and Y. It's a power PC uh, processor uh, automotive. I'll put the part number in the description. And we've got not one but two different DSPs, whereas like on the Model 3 uh, ICE, we only have one. So this extra DSP grunt is probably for the active noise uh, uh, cancellation that's being introduced that isn't yet active. Um, we've got the Real Realtek uh, Ethernet switch. Um, let's see what else on here of note. Um... These are the um, uh, serializers for the display. I guess that's really... Uh, you know, everything else is kind of glue logic. There's an SPI, uh, like BIOS chip for the Ryzen. The rest is like power supply. There's some CAN phis over here for the gateway. Um, the uh, 100 meg broad reach phis. And that's about it. Now underneath, we have, well, let me go back here, we have this connector here, um, which is likely a, a PCI Express, I think it's like a 16 lane PCI Express that's going down to the graphics card. So yeah, just a flex, this is a proprietary connector, uh, so it car carries power and probably the PCI. So under here we have, uh, basically it's a GPU that's, equivalent to like an AMD Radeon Pro uh, W6600. It's uh, likely somewhat customized. Again, the part number doesn't directly line up with anything available. We've got uh, Samsung RAM. These are the voltage regulation buck converters. Some glue. Um, capacitor filtering for power supply to other voltage regulators for probably for some different voltages some more over here but yeah separate GPU so in theory um, like in other cars if they wanted to have a scaled down version of this that wasn't driving three displays they could just emit this um, and then you know run the graphics off the Ryzen a uh, nice copper heat spreader for the CPU I mean it's 45 watts they've got to dissipate this this whole thing is a cold plate that's chilled by the glycol And then, yeah, we have uh, also a heat spreader for the GPU. And then on the back side, we have the autopilot computer. Um, this is pretty much the same uh, board that's being used in Model 3 and Y right now. There's very little differences. Let's see if I can get it out of here. <clears throat> um, yeah, n not much to say on this. Not, not a lot's changed. We've got our gigabit broad reach ethernet connection that goes back up to uh, the Ryzen. We've got our camera connectors. Um, this is GPS. Uh, we got um, the rear camera, selfie camera, um, main camera, repeater camera, uh, pillar cameras. Um, and these are the other two main cameras, the wide angle and the narrow. And then interestingly enough here, they have a repeater two camera marked I don't know what application that's for, but it's obviously not populated on this board. We got a U-Box GP high high rate GPS, the two custom Tesla autopilot brains, um, bunch of power supply stuff. 
There's also a USB-C and HDMI port, which are neither USB-C or HDMI. Tesla's just using the connectors for debug purposes. So don't connect anything here. I, I don't know what would happen, but it might not be good. <laughs> Um, then we got our dual uh, power and CAN bus connections, just like before. So this thing's split in two, basically. So the power feeds are separate, coming from different sides of the car. If power was to go out on one, the other one could take over. Um, got a Marvell Ethernet switch. I guess, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, again, this, this hasn't really changed much. Well, that's uh, that's a good look at the car computer. Um, very very nice machined, uh, or I think it's cast and machined enclosure. There's also normally a steel back cover on here, which serves as mounting bracket. Um, but yeah, this is a well designed, cost optimized assembly that Tesla's famous for. Um, I I don't think there's anything more that I need to share if you have any questions though uh, feel free to ask them below and if you like these videos uh, please like and subscribe um, i'll keep making some it, um, i guess that's yeah if you have any more uh if you'd like some more detail on this you know let me know i'll try to put as much as i can about the part numbers in the description all right everyone take care